These guys are less than 24 hours old. Um, they were not here yesterday, and then this morning, boom. I want to give you guys a quick tip when feeding these golden pearls. Siphon the hose. I'm going to stick this kind of here, bring it down. I'm a firm believer when you do things the hard way, you learn more. Let's see if you guys can see that I got the one scooped up there. This is probably one of the most exciting days in the fish cave ever. And that is because you are looking at a tub full of rainbow fish eggs that has started to become a rainbow fish fry. Let's see if we can get, uh, there's like four in this corner. So there are some Praycox rainbow, dwarf neon rainbow fish, and there's four, I think you can see the four here, and there's a few more swimming around here. But today is Sunday, August, or September. Today is Sunday, September 2nd, and we've had these guys, we got them about six days ago now, I wanna say, and they just started to hatch this morning. So they just started to hatch this morning. We have the um, 50 or five to 50 micron golden pearls food. I wanna share with you guys a quick tip about how to feed these golden pearls. But before I do so, a huge shout out to Pro Tim Aquatics for the new channel intro. If you haven't seen it yet, I'm in love. It is definitely fire. Please drop a comment down below. Let me know what you think of the new intro and definitely check out Pro Tim's channel. I'm gonna link him below. If you're not familiar, not only does he hook up a bunch of other fish fan channels with cool intros, he has a channel himself. Also, while we're giving out shout outs, a big shout out to Tom over at Team Aquatics, not only for the rainbow fish eggs, but for this vial of the uh, golden pearls food as well i actually ordered um the 5 to 50 micron size on amazon if you guys are looking for some as well i'll drop my amazon affiliate link i appreciate it if you use it the channel will get a small percentage when i first got this food i used to like sprinkle it on my fingers and rub it around but i noticed it would clump up in my fingers so what i've since started doing is just tapping it don't put your fingers on it. Uh, don't try to like sprinkle it or you know crush it like a flake. And just to make sure you don't accidentally tap the whole entire jar or package into the fish tank, I would recommend tapping it into like a thick piece of paper or a little something first so you can get an idea of how much is in there. And then you could take that and you know, you know that the whole thing can go in there. The purpose of feeding this food is how tiny it is. So when you actually clump it up in your hands, you're making it bigger, as opposed to flake when you crush it up and make it smaller. When you rub this through your hands, you're actually making it a bigger so the fish can't eat it. So the best thing that I've noticed is, in this vial, what have you, just kind of just tap it out and let it kind of just spray and spread nice and thin layer across the top. And that's the best way that I found to feed these golden pearls. Three of the four containers have fry. This container, this 10 gallon container, is the one I have yet to see fry in. Uh, so I've yet to see any swimming fry in here, but we have uh, at least five in this container plus a few more, and then we'll bring it inside. We got a few in those, in both of the inside containers. And what's really cool is, I never turn this heater on. So the temperature, if you remember, both of these were distilled water. So they've hatched in distilled water here, and they hatched in my tap water inside and they hatched in the 83 degree water inside, but they also hatched in this water, and um, this water right now is just, whoops, just a little above 80, but I don't have the heater on, so this one actually dips below at night. So this is gonna be another control test here with this one uh, to see if they can take some little lower temperatures. But if you guys haven't seen it, like I said, these guys are less than 24 hours old. Um, they were not here yesterday, and then this morning, boom, there they are. I've been seeing these eggs, the eyes and the eggs, and sure enough, oh, there's a fifth one in the screen right there. You can see all five. Um, I think there's some more, but there's five right there. I'm actually gonna prep some stuff and get ready to upgrade the fry um, to a, a tank with a filter. I'm not gonna move them yet, but I'm just planning ahead and gonna set ourselves up for success. However, interesting thing, I'm out here and I wanted to use this Tupperware in order to do some switching around, etc. And this Tupperware has a little bit of water in it and a little bit of detritus. Now, this is the Tupperware that I used when I got the rainbow fish eggs from Tom and I cut open the bag and I got the mops out and the mops were sitting in this Tupperware and I put the mops into you know the two containers here and the two containers inside. I thought to myself, I don't see any eggs in here. At that time, I, I didn't even know what the eggs looked like. I don't see any eggs in here. But let me just, you know, leave the water here just in case. And sure enough, we saw our first wigglers, what was it, yesterday or two days ago now? I switched some stuff up over here to get ready for the next stage of the fry. I'm kind of setting this 10 gallon up 
as I'm gonna put most of the fry, I feel like, are gonna go in this 10 gallon uh, to raise for the next step. Um, we actually had a few hatch in here as well. I noticed one or two in here. This mop was the dud of all the four containers. This was the container that didn't have any hatch. Well, I found some in here. So four out of four hatched and actually five out of five technically. So we got swimmers out of every single mop. It looks like every single container. Now it's a matter of just trying to figure out what works best. It seems like we have a pretty good range of what can work. We want to dial it into what works best. So as you can see, I set up a sponge filter in the 10 gallon. I still am only gonna fill it about halfway or so. Don't need tons of volume. Got the heater in there, wanna keep it in the, the low 80s. Over here, what I did was I added just a little bit of air just to kind of get the circulation going. I've been doing some water changes, just a little air siphon, like a little tiny you know, water changes. Especially now since I started to feed the, uh, the golden pearls, which is uh, 5 to 50 microns, the really small, small stuff. It's still food though, and uh, now that I'm adding and they're eating and pooping, we have live animals in here. Even though we don't have a filter yet, I want to just add a little bit of aeration. I may even turn the bubbles down a little more. Just want a little something. I'm trying to be really conservative with the count. I mean, I, honestly, I'd be happy with just a few. You know, if I had to go to the store and buy a pack of six, it was really cool just to raise six from eggs. But obviously, it'd be sweet to get even more. So if we can come away with, you know, a few dozen, that'd be amazing. We probably got hundreds of eggs throughout all these mops. So I'm sure we could definitely improve things to make it better. But, you know, for the first time, I'm happy. You know, we've still have a long way to go. These guys have still only been hatched for uh, like two or three days now, some of them. So we got to really stay on top of the water quality, stay on top of the water changes, stay on top of the food, get them ready to go from this golden pearl to maybe the larger golden pearl size to then maybe some uh, baby brine shrimp. And once again, big shout out and thank you to Tom over at TM Aquatics. He's kind of doing this as well, a few steps ahead of me. So he's been invaluable with information, and letting me know kind of what's been working for him. But so far, you know, we've been plugging along. So far, so good, guys. This has been a really cool project. Um, it was a few days there where there was no fry and I was getting a little worried, but now that we got the fry and you know, I know I didn't really screw things up royally, um, I'm excited to push forward. Believe it or not, there's actually a few dozen rainbow fry in here. I'm not sure if you can pick them up on camera. They, I think they're in the top left. I doubt you can see them, but maybe I'll zoom in later. But we're gonna do a little bit of a water change here. As you can see, some of the food and stuff's at the bottom. So we need to do a water change. And what I'm gonna do here is take this little bowl in my hand with some siphon hose. I'm gonna stick this kind of here, bring it down and start a siphon. And I'm just gonna do like a little vacuuming. All right, the siphon started. I'm not sure how much we can see here, but I'm just gonna kind of go along the bottom and suck up anything, all the, the detritus. And for the most part, they're staying the fryer at the top of the water. They are scattering around, so just be careful. And what I can do is, with my thumb, I'm keeping my thumb on the, the airline down as it goes into the tub or into the container in my hand, and I can squeeze on the airline to kind of uh, slow down the, uh, the flow here. And this is tedious. This is a reason why if I want to do this long term, I'm going to set up a full rack system similar to uh, uh, LR Brett's. If you haven't seen his new rack system for breeding, oh my gosh, you guys got to check it out. He got these half gallon tubs. It's like my dream system for sure. But you know what? We live, we learn. You know, we do things the hard way. I'm a firm believer when you do things the hard way, you learn more about it. So I like to learn a bunch of aspects about it before I put it into uh, easy mode and cruise control. I'm gonna finish up vacuuming here and then I'm gonna show you guys how I put the water back in the tub. Before I put the water back in, I wanna go ahead and um, there was that other tub, this is another container, it looks the same, but another container that I had, um, this is the water that was just left over from the package and I have two more fry in here that hatched out that are swimmers. So I wanna to try to grab these two fry and add them to this container and then we'll go ahead and add water back in, complete the water change. I was gonna try to use a net but there's literally no way. I'm gonna to have to try to suck them up with some water and then add some of this water to the, see there's one, if you guys can see that, let's see. See if you guys can see that I got the one scooped up there. So there's one guy, and we're gonna grab the other one, let's put him in. These guys are so tiny. Okay, he's in. I shouldn't have to acclimate, these are both just sitting here in the fish cave with no heaters. All right, let's see if I can't scoop this second guy here. It's easier when they're closer to the top of the water. Oop, got them. They're so small that just a, a little bit of the, the suction from the water coming into the container actually just scoops them right up. Let's see if we can get a good look at this guy as well before we let him go. Oh 
shoot. Where is he? Oh, there he is. And let's get this guy in too. There he is. All right. So as we're moving forward, the plan is to keep condensing the fry into less and less different places. So we had started with four, ended up with five containers. Now we're actually down to three containers, and I want to bring it down to like two or one here soon as the fry continue to grow. So in order to put the water back in the tub here, it's going to be super simple. We just got a gallon container here that I now filled up with just tap water, dechlorinated it. I tied a little rock on the end of an airline. I'm going to suck on this end, and we're going to fill it back up. All right, I'm just gonna stick it right in there, in the bottom. The flow is not too much for them, and we are completing our water change. I mentioned condensing down to three containers, so we have the two outside, and then of the two remaining out here, this one actually doesn't have any fry. I think, I noticed one dead fry. At most, I think I saw six to eight in here at one time, and then I think I transferred two or three from here to this container. Um, so I'm still leaving this running just because just in case I miss one but as far as I know there's no more fry left in here like I said I think I had some die off I'm not sure why but I did keep track of temperature and feedings and numbers so after this is all done I'm gonna try to figure it out or at least get a good idea um, over here in this one I'm not sure if I'm gonna be able to see but there's quite a bit in here I think at one point my wife counted 25 and then just you know couldn't count anymore um, there's still a decent amount so we have a healthy amount in this container for sure and I took all the mops there was two mops in this 2.5 gallon originally and the mop in here so now all five mops are in that 10 gallon and I don't think there's many eggs left or what have you but just in case you know like I said I don't want to throw anything out so I've been saving everything the water the mops you know just milking every last egg slash swimmer you know I can get out of this project I'm filming this portion Saturday night you guys will be seeing this tomorrow morning as you can see they're growing we can see the fry but they're still minuscule I should have another update here in about two to three weeks I'm gonna move the fish over we're gonna add some plants they'll definitely put on some size and then after that I'll keep you guys updated in about three months we should be able to tell their sex and like I said guys in a year from now I'm planning on breeding these actual rainbow fish yes these little tiny minuscule things we're gonna breed them and then we're gonna go ahead and raise those eggs so it's gonna be kind of a cool full circle thing I appreciate you guys joining me on this journey if you haven't seen it yet check out the video where we got the eggs in the mail and set up these containers or you can check out one of these other videos as always guys stay positive and stay passionate